Hello friends, this video on environmental issues part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now when we talk about eutrophication, there is another concept of accelerated eutrophication that is forceful eutrophication or, or forceful aging of legs by introducing more and more nutrients or more and more chemicals into the water because we know by introduction of more nutrients in the form of phosphates or nitrates, the growth of or the primary productivity can be increased and when the primary productivity increases the legs start to age quickly so that is called accelerated eutrophication and this accelerated eutrophication can be a major cause of water pollution so that is why we talked about eutrophication here so let us see what happens so this is the acceleration of the process of aging due to human activities so accelerated means what increased to increase the speed of something so here to increase the speed of aging of the legs so that is called accelerated eutrophication and it happens due to human activity so what kind of human activities can increase the speed of aging of legs so some of the human activities which can accelerate this process are for example, disposal of sewage without treatment. So sewage disposal could be one such human activity. Agricultural waste disposal, which contain a lot of fertilizers and insecticides and pesticides. Disposal of industrial wastes. Again, industrial wastes will also have a lot of chemicals which might be rich in nitrogen or phosphorus. Now, all these wastes contain a lot of phosphates and nitrates. And these phosphates and nitrates act as plant nutrients. So, plants need these phosphates and nitrates for their growth and development. Therefore, plants tend to grow at a faster rate. And this accelerates the process of aging. Because normally, what happens is, normally, what we saw the process of uh, uh, eutrophication how it happens it changes from oligotrophic state to mesotrophic state and from mesotrophic state it gradually changes to eutrophic states so this is how the uh, gradual conversion happens and each of these conversion takes several years like oligotrophic to mesotrophic might take some hundred years Again, mesotrophic to eutrophic might even take some thousand years or so. So after, after many years, this transition actually takes place. But when suddenly there is an increase in the nutrient content, in that case, what happens? Too much of plant growth takes place. Therefore, too much of primary productivity happens. Now, when too much of plants start growing, what happens? The lower sediment layer increases, so the lake tend to become shallow. And as a result, what happens is it directly, tran the transition directly takes place from oligotrophic to eutrophic. So, there is no mesotrophic state in between. So, it directly jumps from oligotrophic to eutrophic and the amount of time taken is less than 100 years. So if you compare the second transition with the first transition, what do you see? It The process is accelerated to a large extent. Earlier it was in thousands. Conversion of oligotrophic to eutrophic was in thousands of years. But now it is even less than 100 years. So in this case, the state which is received is not even entrophic, eutrophic state. In fact, it is hyper eutrophic state. That means when the lake is too much shallow and when there is the primary productivity has also increased too much. So in that case, it is uh, said to be hyper eutrophic. So now this is a scenario which arises due to human activities and the human activities include disposal of wastes into the uh, lakes. So this is how it happens. So this was oligotropic and from oligotrophic it directly becomes eutrophic or even hyper eutrophic. And how this happens? Due to disposal of several wastes which are rich in and these wastes are rich in nutrients like nitrates and phosphates and because of this nutrients too many plants tend to grow primary productivity increases and therefore the depth of the lake reduces so this is how accelerated eutrophication take place so now the question is what is the effect of accelerated eutrophication how do we know that accelerated eutrophication is something which is not desirable why why is it harmful 
So in case of accelerated eutrophication, there will be excess nutrient enrichment in the form of nitrates and phosphates which are present in the, all the types of wastes which are being thrown into the lake. Now as a result of this, what would happen? Too much of these nutrients will make the water clarity poor. So there is a, a reduction in the clarity of water. Growth of algae will take place because even algae, as we saw, algal bloom. Why does algal bloom take place? When there is too much of nutrient present. Due to the presence of excess nutrients, the algae undergo excessive growth. And that is how algal bloom occurs. So growth of algae will take place which might even result in algal bloom. Lack of dissolved oxygen. Now what happens is when there is too much of nutrients present, so due to the algal bloom or due to growth of too many unnecessary plants or due to extremely high increase in the primary productivity, what happens is the oxygen gets used up and therefore there is lack of dissolved oxygen for the aquatic animals. Threat to aquatic life. Now as I said, if algal bloom is there, so algal bloom in itself is a threat to aquatic life. At the same time, when the water also gets, you know, uh, the, when the composition of water also changes due to the presence of too much of nitrates and phosphates, so the water also is no more uh, good for the aquatic life. So that means it is a threat to aquatic life and it can even kill the aquatic organisms living there. So now that we, uh, we read about quite a few important causes of water pollution, let us quickly see that how can water pollution be controlled. So one is proper sewage disposal after sewage treatment. Now as we saw primary and secondary treatment of sewage can obviously turn it from extremely toxic to less toxic and that is how it will reduce the water pollution. Segregation of wastes. Now, if we start disposing wastes directly into water, some of the wastes might contain nitrogen, some might contain phosphate, some might contain lead, mercury and what not. So it is always better to segregate the waste so that we separate the organic wastes from the non-biodegradable wastes and then they can be disposed of accordingly. Shallow ponds should be preferred over bigger ones for domestic and industrial wastes. Now even after proper segregation or even after proper treatment, when we have to dispose the wastes, we, we need to choose the appropriate lake. For example, the shallower lakes, they are, what does that mean? So they have already aged. They are already old lakes. So if we use those lakes, it is better because they do not have much depth. So if their depth is less, the aquatic life living there is also going to be less. And anyways, the wastes have been treated. Therefore, they are not going to be that harmful. So the loss that might would have come if we had uh, disposed it into a young lake is going to be quite less in this case. So therefore, we should always try to uh, utilize the older lakes or the shallower lakes for disposal of domestic and industrial wastes. Avoid the use of fertilizer before rain. Now this is extremely important. Now as we have seen that fertilizers are something which are used in, uh, in agriculture in order to improve the crop productivity and these fertilizers are, have extremely high content of phosphates and nitrates. So now when we apply fertilizer to the field and immediately after that if it rains what happens is the fertilizer get washed away and it pollutes the nearby water body, the nearby pond or the nearby river. Therefore we should always avoid using fertilizer before rain or we should never irrigate the field after applying fertilizers. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.